is the kitty with the cream. Excuse me, sir. Such a pretty skull. Ashwardly tells me that you worked for Bunty Henderson. I remember seeing you there. Please, sir. There's no rush. Oh, come on, go, chop, chop. My pleasure, Sonia. Excellent evening. Thank Andrew, you, love to see you. See you soon. Trouble? Aye. I've got a couple of heifers on the loose. Mine, there you go. Right. Best of luck. Boy, we'll get you some help. Get the blanket. What? Oh, Andrew, get the car blanket! What's happened? It's an accident. Get an ambulance. Oh, don't worry about those, Gina. Do them in the morning. Oh, they're nearly done now. Right. Well, I think I'll uh, turn in. It is what you want, isn't it? Yeah. Fine. Night. Night, Oscar. Uh, that's as much as we can do round here, I think. I'll have a word with the cop and the Bentley. Oh, uh, what's your step? What's that? It's the uh, high sheriff and his missus. How is he? Conscious, that's all I can tell you. He's damn lucky to be alive. There was no way that my wife could conceivably have avoided hitting him. Well, as a matter of routine, we're going to have to ask Mrs. Parkin to take a breathalyzer test. Of course. We'll leave the statements till tomorrow. Mr. Vernon? Yes, David. Sorry, but I'm here again. Well, never mind. You do live here. <laughs> no, probably I'm here with that question again. Oh, I. Do the, um, you know, any chance of you paying the rent one? Oh, that one. Well, actually, David, there's every chance in the world. Yeah? As soon as these little beauties start paying their way. Oh. <laughs> the doctor said we won't be able to talk to the injured man until later on. Bad do. I suppose you know Andrew Parkin is the county high sheriff. Yes, Sarge. Lord Ashfordley's already been on the phone asking if I'll take Parkin's statement. Why is that? Toff's charter, Bradley. They don't like discussing their business with the lower ranks. I see. But Mrs. Parkin's breath test was negative, you say? Yes, Sarge. Well, that's a relief. Andrew Parkin's been known to tie a few on. It certainly smelled that way. Well, you do what's necessary at the scene. I'll talk to the Parkins. Right, Sarge. Oh, uh, Sarge, just one thing. The driver's seat of the Bentley was too far back for a woman of Mrs. Parkin's height. What are you saying? That she lied. That Mr. Parkin was driving the car, not her. Hello? Gina? Hello, me. What are you doing here? Hi. Where's Gina? Oh, she's gone out. Hmm. Said she'd be here. Did she? When was this? Last night. She must have forgotten me. Yes. Maybe she did. 
Uh, look, I don't think I've had the opportunity to, uh, well, you know, congratulate you properly. <laughs> Thanks. I think she was a bit shocked. Yeah, I think she was. Well, I don't know why. I mean, it's the obvious next step. Mm. Well, she probably needs more time to uh, get used to the idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're stopping, make yourself a cup of tea. Oh. What's going on? I'm branching out, our kid. Here, take a look at those. Who are they? Lonely Hearts. It's an old business of mine I'm giving a new lease of life to. Where'd you get all these? I advertise for them. You see, when they pay their registration fee, they get their details and the photo in the book. This is my stock in trade. What about my paperwork? It's all filed. In the teacher. Look, Vernon. Look, it's going to be marvellous when the people start rolling up. Oh, people are going to drop in and fill up and choose a wife while they're at it, are they? I was thinking rather the other way round. Well, I'm sorry, Vernon. You'll have to think again. But it's too late, Orchid. The advert went in yesterday. Where would you like me to start? From leaving Ashfordley Hall. Oh, well, we left at about um, 11 o'clock. And did Lord Ashley see you off? Yes. He watched you get into the car. Oh, uh, he might have. I'm not quite sure. What is the relevance of this, Sergeant? I'm just trying to get a complete picture, sir. Please go on, Mrs. Parkin. I drove away from the hall. At what speed were you doing? Um, not quite sure, really. About 40, I should say. Yes, about 40. And what happened then? Well, I drove round a bend, and suddenly there he was in the middle of the road, waving his arms. Complete madman. And I slammed on the brakes, but and there was this bump. And I mean, it was horrible, really horrible. I'm sorry. It's all right. It's all right. As you can see, Sonia is still in a bit of a state. That's why this shouldn't take very much longer. Do you have the license and insurance details to hand? Yes, of course. Do you often drive the Bentley, Mrs. Parkin? Not really, no. But normally, there's no need. But Ashford is very generous with his measures. One tries to be sensible. <laughs> How can I help? Oh, just a couple of questions, Lord Ashfordley. Mr. and Mrs. Parkin had been here for dinner, I believe. Yes. Did you uh, see them off at the end of the evening? Oh, yes, of course. I was the host, Constable. So you saw them get into their car? What? Did you see them get into the car? Well, I'm not sure. A matter of fact, I don't think I did. I had other guests to attend to. So, you didn't see who was driving the Bentley? Well, Sonny Parkin was driving, isn't that what she said? Y yes, that's what she says. But you can't confirm it. Well, if Mrs. Parkin says she was driving, Constable, then I am sure she was. How many, David? Oh, uh, uh, two gallons. Only two? Well, I can always come back. I don't remember you registering, David. Oh, sorry, sorry, Mr. Vernon. I was just uh, looking. It's not haberdashery, lad. It costs to look in those, you know. How much? Ten pounds. What do you get for that? Well, if you're lucky, you get the girl of your dreams. Ten pounds? Only ten, and you get it straight back in rent. But what happens if I'm not lucky? I mean, do, do I get a refund? Well, it never pays to look on the downside. You pay your money and you take your chance. Not before he pays for his bedroll. Oh, stop cramping the lad's style, Bernard. 
He's fit, young, got his own teeth. If he put his photo in there, the women would come running. Oh, you mean somebody might pick me? Well, it's a two-way thing, David. All part of the service. Eric wants to see you as soon as you come in. Don't tell me, Ashford, he's been on the blower. Why? Have you upset him? Well, I didn't exactly accuse Mrs. Parkin of lying. But near enough. He's, uh, he's closed ranks. Naturally. Ah, oh, Bradley, how was the layout? Ah, uh, much the same as usual. So no joy there, then. Oh, what did Mrs. Parkin say? Only there was nothing she could have done to avoid hitting Taylor. That's it, she was sitting in the passenger seat. And stick to facts, Bradley, not guesswork. What about the tyre marks? What about them? Fifty miles per hour on that stretch of road is reckless. You think we could secure a prosecution on that alone? Perhaps not, but at least we should wait for the injured man's statement before shutting up shop. Very well. You talk to him when you can, but remember, I want this thing wrapped up as soon as possible. Here are Mrs. Parkin's license and insurance details on the statement. I don't doubt your instincts, Bradley, but you need to be very sure of yourself before tackling someone like Andrew Parkin, otherwise his next victim could be you. Sarge? Yes? I don't think we'll be wrapping this up as quickly as you'd hoped. Why? What is it? Fact. Not guesswork. Sonia Parkin wasn't insured to drive a Bentley. Now, big wave, big wave. That's it. Big smile this time. Let's see your teeth. Yes! Right, Ted. Let's have a big smile, shall we? That's wonderful. I'll tell you what, let's try one with a hat on, shall we? Yeah, I'll tell you, put the hat back on. We don't want to get an ugly one, do we? Great. Big smile, big beanies. Oh, yes. Oh, what a great shot. Got it. Out of the country. Hiya. Hiya. I called earlier. Yeah, Oscar said. Where'd you go? Just out. Doing what? Getting some fresh air. Thinking. What's wrong, Gina? Is it me? No. I hadn't planned to propose like that. It was a mistake to put you on the spot in front of everybody. I'm sorry. I could always try again. No. Take you somewhere more romantic. Tell you all the things I intended to say. No, Phil. You said all you needed to say. And it was lovely. But I shouldn't have said yeah. Why not? Why not, Gina? Because I don't want to marry you. I thought you loved me. I thought we both felt the same way. Phil, I'm so sorry. You're the sweetest, most caring, most generous man I've ever met. So, why? Because I don't love you. Trust me, Gina. Phil, I can't. It wouldn't work. It's not what I want. Tell me I won't lose you as a friend. It was a surprise to you. Built out as a blue sergeant. I assumed that Sonia was a name driver on the policy. I've had my broker see to it right away. Well, I feel that's rather too late as far as we're concerned. Not to mention the injured man. Oh, rotten luck. I agree. But it doesn't alter the fact that he was wholly to blame. Well, as you probably know, sir, driving without insurance is an absolute offence. Meaning? We have no alternative but to charge your wife. I see. 
That would mean a court case, publicity and so on? Well, not necessarily, no, sir. It is possible for your wife to plead guilty by post. The news hounds don't normally pick up on that. We assume she will be pleading guilty. There's not much choice, is there? Not if she was driving, no. Hi. Hi you're late. I'm sorry. I've uh, just been down the hospital getting a statement of Colin Taylor. How is he? Not great. Especially after I told him Sonia Parkin wasn't in short to drive the car. What? I know. Andrew Parkin said it was an oversight. Oh, no. Well, what about Taylor's own insurance? He's only covered for injury on his own land. Well, then his only way is through a civil claim. What would his chances be? What, of compensation? Well, from what you've told me, not too rosy. There were no independent witnesses, no suggestion that the car was faulty, and Taylor's negligence was a major factor. Craddock's told me to write the report, then uh, sweep it under the carpet. Well, perhaps he's right. We can't. We? Well, as Craddock's put the block on me, I, um... What? Well, I... I told Taylor that you'd do what you could. Look, the guy's had a rough time. I couldn't leave him that hope. Mr. Vernon? What's up now? I'm stuck. Why? I've never, never done anything like this before. I want to give her... Wendy, good impression of me. Well, I've given you the words. Just pick a few and bung them in. Right, which ones, then? <sighs> Ambitious. Women like a man who's going places. Is that you? I went to Scarborough once. Well, there you are, then. Are you planning on going again? No, I'm not. Ah, oh, see. Sporty. Do you play anything? Well, I'm second reserve for the pub dominoes team. Who's first reserve? Well, there's only one else, really. Uh, right. Hey, what, what, what's this one? Solvent. Solvent, David. Solvent. For a lady, that is the most romantic word you can use. Cheers. Suppose you're gonna say I told you so. What's wrong with me, Av? Oh, nothing, Phil. Nothing at all. It's more to do with Gina than you. How do you mean? Well, for what it's worth, I don't think she could bear the possibility of letting you down. Especially after you'd resigned from the force. Well, that was my choice. Well, maybe. But she'd still have it on her conscience as well. I have loved Gina from the first time I saw her, you know. Yes. That's a shame. You went well together. Yeah. When I saw your photo, my heart skipped a beat. Your eyes and hair look lovely, just like my mam's. You're saying she looks like your mother. Well, that's a compliment. Not to Wendy, I'm sure. No, you've never even seen my mam. No, but I can guarantee she's got a few more miles on her clock than you're intended. Anyway, I think it's very important that she gets on with Mum. And Alfred. Jumping the gun here a little bit, aren't we, lad? Let's just get this into the post before we start playing happy families, eh? My report on the RTA, Sarge. Did Taylor shed any new light on the incident? Uh, no, Sarge, but there is one development you should know about. Go on. Taylor's case has been taken up by a solicitor, and she's put a private investigator on the case. And you wouldn't happen to live with the solicitor by any chance, would you? Yes, Sarge, uh, but you also know the name of the P.I., Oscar Blaketon. Isn't he busy enough counting bottles? Apparently, he thinks that's a waste of his skills and contacts. Oh, yes. Well, if any information leaks out of this station, rest assured I shall pursue the mole with a will. 
Yes, Sergeant. And you might tell that to anybody else who fancies cozying up to Blaketon for old time's sake. Right, Sergeant. Come in. I've already given a statement to the police. I realise that, Mr Cope, but I'm here purely on behalf of the injured man. Well, I didn't see the accident. We arrived soon after. We? Oui. Me and Susie, my daughter. I'd gone to Ashford Leor to pick her up after work. Oh, I see. In fact, I saw Colin Taylor on my way there. I pulled up and had a word with him. What about? He told me to take care, cos some effers had gone out. And what then? I drove on to the hall. I picked Susie up and drove back. It wasn't long before I came on the accident. The two from the Bentley were bent over Colin Taylor, and the man shouted at me to get an ambulance. That was it. Right, well, thanks. Uh, look, do you think it's possible I could have a word with your daughter? Oh, she's not here. Look, I realise she works long hours at the hall. Perhaps you could suggest a time? Well, she don't work there now. Sorry. She was dismissed yesterday. Really? Lord Ashfordley said she'd been rude to a guest, so she's out looking for another job. I see. I'm fed on my lord. Oh, in Bladen? Yes, not bad. What brings you out here? Well, I'm after some information, sir. Well, I hadn't taken you for a racing man. <laughs> Afraid I'm not, sir, no. No, I'm making inquiries for solicitors acting for Colin Taylor. Well, that's not all I'm going to say about that to the police. Well, uh, with respect, my lord. Respect, Blaketon, is precisely what is missing. Respect for my privacy and respect for the High Sheriff and his wife. I'm sorry, sir. So you should be. You've obviously turned into what our American cousins call an ambulance chaser. I'm sorry. No more, I'm busy. Charles has had a visit from a private investigator. Hired by Taylor's solicitor. A man called Blaketon, an old sweat formerly with Ashfordley Station. Supposing he comes here? He's not the police, Sonia. We don't have to talk to him. Charles suggests that I offer Taylor a, a small extra payment to encourage him to keep Blaketon off. How small? Three hundred pounds. Oh. Well, any more might seem like an admission of guilt. And we wouldn't want that now, would we? Supposing he doesn't accept? Well, that's his choice. And the investigator continues to ask questions? Let him. He won't find out any more than the police. Well, he might learn something from the girl's father. Like what? He's likely to be quite hostile now his daughter's lost her job. Meaning? Oh, well, it's you who got her dismissed, wasn't it? What? Oh, I saw you eyeing her. <laughs> so did everybody else. Don't be ridiculous. When you left the room on some pretext or other, there were humiliating winks all around the table. The next thing, the girl comes back into the room all flustered and bothered, and I thought, oh, vintage Andrew at his best. What a sport. I gave you my word, Sonia. You promised me. And I've kept it. I might have had too much to drink that night. I accept that. But that girl kicked me, and even in these godforsaken times, that's a sackable offence. Cheers. So, uh, Susie, did you find another job? Yeah, it's only temporary, but at least I don't have tough slobbering down my neck. Now, that's what Andrew Parkin did, is it? He was drunk. Horrible, so uh, I kicked him. Weren't her fault, but she got the blame. Toffs only allow their horses to kick them, Mr Cope. He thought he could get away with anything till now. Will he go to jail? Who? Parkin, for running that man down. <sighs> no. But he was drunk. Maybe so, but his wife claimed she was driving the car. Mrs. Parkin was driving the Bentley. That's what she told the police. And she's as bad as her husband. I saw him driving that car out of Ashford Lee Hall with my own eyes. Hi, 
Hello? Are you the proprietor? Well, that depends. Is it welded bliss you're looking for or the wedded sort? Oh, the latter, hopefully. Well, that's my brother's business and he's out. Ah. Uh. But if you'd care to wait, I'm sure he won't be long. Little tea service matches your overalls. Shall I be mother? Please. He'd been ill for some time. Even so, it was a shock. Of course. He died two years ago, and I'm sure he'd want me to find some companionship. After all, I think I've got a good few years left in me yet. Yeah, I can see that. Still, I am rather nervous about this sort of thing. How long has your brother been running this service? Well, quite recently from here. Uh, judging by the number of his clients, he's been very active elsewhere. Perhaps you would look at my details. Tell me if I've missed anything. No, uh, nothing missing here. Nothing at all. <laughs> of course, you might try your luck in the courts. But then again, you might be in need of the funds now rather than wait for years and run the risk of getting nothing. A bird in the hand, Mr. Taylor. Ah, Mr. Taylor. I'm Oscar Blaketon. Mrs. Bradley's asked me to look into your case. Oh. I'm not sure I'll be needing you, Mr. Blaketon. Mr. Parkin here wants to settle the business. Settle it? How? With a payment of £300. What have you said? Nothing yet. Well, take my advice and tell him where to stuff it. Is Mrs. Bradley prepared to pay for running his farm till he gets on his feet? He offers a contract. Answer the question. He's right, Mr. Blaketon. I need the money now. Not sometime, never. If you accept this offer, you'll be sacrificing thousands of pounds in compensation. It's up to you, Mr. Taylor. Trust me. I'll stick with my solicitor. I hope you won't be sorry. I've never turned so much money down in my life. Now, just relax. I've got a witness that saw him driving the car, not his wife. And if Parkin was driving, he was insured. And so were you. Nice lady. Yeah, very. You think you'll be able to do anything for her? Already done our kid. She's meeting a fella tomorrow. It's very sudden. Yes, well, these old ones like to get cracking, you know. So who've you fixed her up with? Him. Ted Pollycott? He's a terrible old duffer. He's an out-and-out -out drunk. Not according to his pen portrait. Oh, pen portraits be blowed. He, he, he flogs his farm hands if things don't suit him. Yes, and he starves his dogs just before he sets fire to his granny. Why do I get the feeling you don't like this fella? You can't introduce her to him, Vernon. Now, granted, he's taken more than his share of ugly pills, but he has got land and livestock. Money isn't everything. No, but I got the impression that it was more than an incidental consideration. Get her ready for the first thing tomorrow morning. Ah, oh, Lord Ashley. No, I promise I'm only here to save you embarrassment. What do you mean? Susie Cope. She saw who was driving the Parkins Bentley. Sir? Well, if her evidence contradicts your statement to the police, you could be helping to pervert the course of justice, sir. If you had access to my statement, which clearly you haven't, you'd find that I voice no opinion as to who was driving the car. Oh, why not, sir? Susie Cope saw you wave them off. Did she now? Oh, you knew that. You also knew that Andrew Parkin had molested her. Nonsense. I think she'd become an embarrassment to you and to the Parkins, and that's why you got rid of her. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Blaketon, but Susie Cope was dismissed for no such fanciful reason. I sacked her because I discovered that when she applied for the job here, she gave me a completely bogus reference. So you go ahead. Stick her on the stand. She's your embarrassment now. Oh, 
was only 16. Dad decided I had to go away to have the baby and then come back as if nothing had happened. Well, that makes a gap of six months to be explained in your job application. Yeah. I knew a bit about the Hendersons from a girl who had worked for them. Just my luck, Slobber Chops Parking was a regular visitor there. You persuaded him to turn down 300 pounds without a word to me. Well, I had to react quickly. This isn't the police force, Oscar. Solicitors don't do anything quickly. And with good reason, it costs if we get it wrong. Well, we can still use Susie Cope's evidence, can't we? Are you serious? After her confrontation with Andrew Parkins, she would be considered a hostile witness. And besides which, a forged job reference shows her to be a proven liar. Oh. So, uh, what do I do now? Now, you eat humble pie. Oh, uh, Mr. Blaketon. I'm terribly sorry my husband's kept you waiting. Thank you. Ah, Mr. Parkin, good of you to see me at such short notice. Andrew, should I stay? Yes. I don't think this will take long. Uh, hopefully not, sir. Um, the fact is we've reconsidered the merits of your offer to Mr. Taylor. Really? Yes, and in view of the state of his finances, we've uh, decided to recommend it. Andrew, we're delighted, aren't we? Is there any particular reason for your change of mind? Uh, not really, no, sir. Just the realisation that you haven't a leg to stand on. Well, I uh, wouldn't go as... Goodbye, Mr. Blaketon. Andrew. I've changed my mind. Andrew, that poor man has no money. I made an offer in all good faith, and thanks to this gentleman, it's been thrown back in my face. That isn't a good enough reason. Goodbye, Mr. Blaketon. Come in. Sarge. Yes, Ventress. Um, can I have a word about uh, Phil Bellamy? What about him? Well, um, I don't know whether you've heard, but uh, Gina Ward has turned down his proposal. Oh, really? Well, it means that the reason for his leaving no longer applies. You're saying he wants to come back? Well, he hasn't said as much to me. But this job he's got as a double-glazing salesman. I think he's wasting his time. Folks round here are only just used to single glazing. News? Yes. Good or bad? We've lost our witness, I'm afraid. What do you mean, lost? Her evidence seems to open to doubt. We couldn't put her on the stand. We'd best get back to parking then and accept his offer. I've tried that. Lord Ashfordley must have told him our witness had bitten the dust. He's changed his mind. I'm sorry, Mr. Taylor. How many, Oscar? Ah, oh, six and two shots, please, Bernie. Hey, what's all this about? Vernon's new venture. All oh, right. Well, in my state, I think I put my name down. Hey, you're working on a new line yourself, or is it more like the old one? Well, if it is, Bernie, I'm ring rusty. Mind you, it didn't help taking on two heavyweights, Lord Ashfordley and Andrew Parkin. Never laid a glove on either. Slippery, that Parkin, I sheriff or not. Can't argue with that, Bernie. There's a hairdresser in Whitby. Brings her car in here for repair. Always tells me to send the bill to Parkin's company. Really? What for? Payment. That's interesting.
Mr. Scripps. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Do you have a moment? I'll just... The kind of love There's no conceit I'm not here by chance. You're not? I looked through Vernon's files to find out when you'd be here. Is this to do with the gentleman I'm going to visit? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. But I'm afraid Ted Pollycott's no gentleman. I see. Yeah. In fact, my brother's matched you up with a right bad lot. Surely not. I couldn't stand by and watch you walk innocently through those gates. That's very sweet of you, Mr Scripps. Bernard. Thanks, Bernard. But you really shouldn't have worried. Maybe you don't know him. Ted Pollycott, he's a loud mouth, bad-tempered alcoholic. I'm quite well off, I hear. Well... And I'm not. Whatever money my husband left me is gone. I'm flat broke, Bernard. Well, I'm so. touched that you've come to my rescue. But I've come with my eyes open. You see, Bernard, Mr. Pollycott may be a confirmed drunk, but he'll pretty soon find out that I'm an inveterate gambler. I must go now. Bye. Looking for David Stockwell. Not here, pal. Who are you? Who wants to know? The name's Bo. Folk call me Big Bo. Well, my name's Vernon, and folk call only when invited. Hey! What do you want him for? He's been writing slush to my Wendy. Wendy? My wife. Ah, the uh, fact is, he's gone away. Uh, for good, I think. Without the mutt. The what? The dog, cloth he is. Says the only thing that's missing from this photo is my Wendy. Oh. Where is he? Out. I, I don't know where. I'll wait. Look, I, I don't think he meant to cause any trouble. He's, he's just a... What do you see from the photo? Just a simple country lad. Know some big words for a simple country lad? I will happen he had a mate helping him. Are you a mate? Me? No, no, no. I'm, I'm just a lodger. <laughs> so how long have you and Wendy been wed, then? Eight years. Eight? Doesn't time fly. <laughs> Eight years and three kids. Fancy. Eight years, three kids, a few ups and downs, but this is a new law. Uh, yes, well, I'm, uh, I'm sure David got hold of some duff information. <laughs> just a bit of a mistake, really. Aye, and I'm here to make sure you don't make any more. What's that? What? That noise upstairs. I didn't hear anything. He shouldn't be long. I'm afraid you won't persuade him to change his mind. I've already tried. Well, it's you I came to see, Mrs. Parkin. My husband said I shouldn't talk to anybody if he isn't here. Well, you'll be on your own when you're in court. Charged with driving without insurance. I'm pleading guilty by letter. You'll still be under oath, Mrs. Parkin. The girl that was serving table that night 
Did you know that she saw who was driving the Bentley? I think you'd better go. If you're ever discovered to be lying to save your husband from prosecution, the penalty will be severe. I'm aware of that. I'm talking prison, Mrs. Parkin. I know. But I'm not lying, am I? And who would believe a girl before a lady like you? Hmm? Oh, David, I'm glad I caught you. You weren't thinking of going home, were you? Oh, yeah. Don't. Why not? There's someone waiting for you. Oh? Who? Oh. Big Bo. Do I know him? No, but he knows you. You sent a letter and a photo of yourself to his missus. I'll give you a check. I prefer the truth, Mrs. Parkin. What the deuce are you doing here? I told you not to let him in. What are you doing? I'm writing out a cheque to Mr. Taylor. Put it away. How dare you extort money behind my back? He didn't. Shut up! I want you out now. Sorry, Mr. Blake. Yes, so am I, Mrs. Parkin. You don't deserve this. Why would a woman like you risk her reputation for a man who betrays her so publicly? What did you say? I'm aware of my husband's indiscretions, Mr. Blaketon, and they're a thing of the past. Is that what he tells you? Get out, or I'll call the police. Ask him about the hairdressing salon in Whitby. That'll do, Blaketon. Ask him why he pays the ladies' rates bill. All right. I'm calling the police. Oh, don't worry. I'm going. Grab something. What are you going to do? Tickle his U bend? What was his name again? Big Bo. Bo? It's what he shouts when he creeps up behind you. Do you want to go first? What do you think? in those? Elderflower wine. Oh, it's my mum's. Oh, wonderful. Big, angry, and now crazed. Hey, where are you going? Upstairs. If I'm not back in five minutes, send for reinforcements. Upstairs, out cold. Sleeping it off in your bed. Good. Good, but not that good. How's that? He's been sick in it. Could I have a word? Yes, please, do come in. statement I made to you about the accident. I lied, Constable. I want to put the record straight. Well, you'd, um, you'd better take a seat. Thank you. Yes, Bradley. Sonia Parkins changed her statement to put her husband in the driving seat. Which leaves him facing a charge of making a false statement. Good news for Taylor. True. Not exactly the High Sheriff's finest hour. No, Sarge. There's someone here to see you, if you've got a moment. Come in, Bellamy. Sarge. Sit down. Thanks. How's civilian mm -hmm. life treating you? So-so. And the job? A uh, little pill, to be honest. Uh, People here seem to think double glazing is paying twice for the same view. I see. 
I suppose you've heard about my personal disappointment. I have, I'm sorry. I wondered if, by chance, you hadn't processed my resignation. Do you think I'm that inefficient? No. Of course not. Good. However, in this case, you happen to be right. I take it you'd like to change something? Yes, Sarge. I'd like to change my mind. Thank you.